Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul, everyone. Glad to have you with us this morning. Good to see a little bit more red in the crowd here today, uh, especially uh, some more than others, but uh, looking good. So uh, would you all stand and praise God with us together? Again, we have a few announcements to share. I think pretty much the same as what we've been announcing recently. Good morning. That's all right. <laughs> Very important announcement. Big announcement. Big you missed one last Drum roll, please. Where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, good morning. Uh, the Christmas Cantata coming up next weekend, Saturday and Sunday evening, 6 o'clock. Uh, doors open, 6.30 dinner, 7.30 performance. So. Still a few tickets left. You can get them uh, from the church office uh, this week if you uh, haven't done so already. Uh, Angel tree gifts are due today. It looks like uh, quite a few have been brought in, stacked up in the back there, so that's good to see. Uh, the uh, Advent offering will be for Hope Ministries, and uh, the offerings can be placed in the designated Advent envelopes that are in the back. Also, there will be a Christmas offering to benefit Camp Dickinson. Uh, the Christmas offering envelopes can be used and just write Camp Dickinson on that if you'd like to, to make a donation to that worthy cause. Uh, there won't be any uh, uh, St. Paul Youth meeting this evening because they had their Christmas party already, so, so no meeting tonight. Also, uh, the offering bas basket is in the back of Wesley Hall if you feel so moved. And... Uh, 
it's time for the advent wreath lighting so the tommy x last sunday we lit the candle of hope remembering the hope which comes in christ and we lit the candle of peace remembering god's dream of a peaceful world Today, we light the third candle of Advent, the candle of joy. In Advent, we are in a time of waiting. Like the Israelites who wandered through the wilderness, waiting to come into the promised land, we wait for the coming of joy of ages. We sing, we wait for the day where we can join our voices with the angels to sing, joy to the world, the Lord is come. We wait for the day when everlasting joy will be on each of us. We light this candle in joy. <laughs> on this day, we remember the spirit who breathes joy into our lives. O come, O come, Amen. Oh, excuse me. O come, O come, thou day spring cheer. Our spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night. And death's dark shadow put to flight. Rejoice. stand and sing. Let's sing. Oh.
is beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. Universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are with me please dear God I want to thank you for helping me to accept that I am loved by you no matter how far I sway from your path your love alone gives me strength to face each day father I pray that you will turn our hearts towards you as Christmas approaches let us not get caught up in the hustle and bustle of the season this year and miss the chance to celebrate the gifts of hope, peace, joy, and love that you sent to us on that first Christmas. That first Christmas, you gave us the gift of hope, wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. Thank you, Father, for our immeasurable gift. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, guess what time it is? Santa Claus time. You're right. Santa Claus time. Uh, did you notice I dressed a little different today? Usually I don't come all dressed up here. I'm Santa Claus today, yeah. Well, today's kind of a special day. We lit a special candle, didn't we? It's different than all the other candles. It's the candle of joy, and so I thought I would talk about joy. And so early this week, I started planning what I was going to talk about when I talked to you about joy. And I picked out my Grinch socks. Look at that. And I picked out my Christmas suspenders. You don't like the Grinch? I do. Ah, good. I'm glad you do. And I picked out my Rudolph the candy cane paint and tie. Isn't that wild? He does love Rudolph. Rudolph's pretty cool. Well, I guess so. Yeah. You know, something funny, uh, those people out there, some of them think we preachers know everything. Yeah, but you know what? We don't. And a matter of fact, sometimes we learn things that we already knew, and we have to be reminded, and that's what happened to me this week. And it has to do with joy. It got to be about Wednesday, and Terry was coming in from Tennessee, and I remembered that there were a couple of things I needed at Walmart. Go to Walmart at Christmas time. Now, I know you kids love Walmart at Christmas time, right? I don't. You don't love Walmart? I thought you guys all love Walmart. I hate going to Walmart at Christmas time. But I thought, no, I need these couple of things. I'll just run in, and I'll run back out again. You couldn't believe all the people that were there. They were crawling all over the place, and I waded my way through, and I mumbled, and I grumbled. And I picked up the few things I needed, and I thought, well, thank heavens. I'll just check out and go right back into the parking lot. Lord, I got up to the checkout line, and guess what? Everybody and their uncle was up there, and they all had three kids. And the kids were all standing there nice and quiet, right? No, they're running around having a good time and everything, and I'm sitting there like old Ebenezer Scrooge. I wish I could get out of here. What, sweetie? I'm almost seven. Oh, she's almost seven. My friend turned seven, and I went to a birthday party. 
Oh, good. I'm glad you brought up number seven. That's great. Um, so anyways, I figured I'd just get out of there and everybody, and I'm sitting there like old Ebenezer Scrooge, and then it happened. I heard it in the background first. I didn't hear it very well, but then all of a sudden I heard the music, and guess what the music was? Joy to the world, the Lord has come. And I looked at all those kids playing, and I thought, you know, there they are. And they don't know as much about the Bible, and they don't know as much about Jesus as I know. And they're there joyous, and I'm sitting there like the old Grinch. And you know what I remembered I learned a long time ago? That joy isn't about the clothes you put on, or the socks you wear, or the tie you have. Because joy doesn't have anything to do with what we put on. Joy has to do with what's in our hearts. And if we have Jesus in our hearts, we can celebrate his birthday with joy. Regardless of how long the lines are, how wild the kids are, how slow Walmart is, we can be joyous people. Hmm? That's right. And I need to remember that, don't I? Yeah, I'll try and do better. Hmm? You know what? You guys are a hit. You make my morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, give us the gift of joy this morning and help us learn that joy isn't something we can find. Joy finds us. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Guess what I did better this week? I remembered the candy. Yes. <laughs> it only took three post-it notes. Oh, you got the peanut ones again. You always take the peanut ones. I like the peanut ones. Oh, they're digging for the goodies. Great. What is it about the family Christmas photo that brings out the worst in people? We talk about peace on earth, goodwill to men, and we don our gay apparel and best smiles. Yet, what goes on behind the scenes of the family photo often contradicts the final image we're trying to convey. But perhaps this conflict of what we are and what we wish to be is what the Christmas season is all about. <laughs> the truth that we need someone to save us from ourselves, from our impatience, our frustration, our selfish clash of wills, and perhaps even in our best moments, what the camera captures isn't the image of a perfect family as we are, but the possibility of what we can be through the hope that Christ brings. <laughs> Good morning. <clears throat> okay, so today we're reading out of Isaiah 35, verses 1 through 10. So even the wilderness and desert will be glad in those days. The wasteland will rejoice and blossom with spring crocuses. Yes, there will be an abundance of flowers and singing and joy. The deserts will become as green as the mountains of Lebanon, as lovely as Mount Carmel or the plain of Sharon. Let, there the Lord will display his glory, the splendor of our God. With this news, strengthen those who have tired hands and encourage those who have weak knees. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong and do not fear. For your God is coming to destroy your enemies. He is coming to save you. And when he comes, he will open the eyes of the blind and unplug the ears of the deaf. The lame will leap like a deer, and those who cannot speak will sing for joy. Springs will gush forth in the wilderness, and streams will water the wasteland. The parched ground will become a pool, and springs of water will satisfy the thirsty land. Marsh grass and reeds and rushes will flourish where desert jackals once lived. And a great road will go through that once deserted land. It will be named the Highway of Holiness. Evil-minded people will never travel on it. It will be only for those who walk in God's ways. Fools will never walk there. Lions will not lurk along its course, nor any other ferocious beast. There will be no other dangers. Only the redeemed will walk on it. Those who have been ransomed by the Lord will return. They will enter Jerusalem singing, crowned with everlasting joy. Sorrow and mourning will disappear, and they will be filled with joy and gladness. 
This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. On this uh, Sunday of joy, we may not ever think about it, but uh, the scripture is true. All of creation groans, waiting for the arrival of Jesus. That when the fall occurred, it not only affected us, it affected all of God's creation. The prophet Isaiah prophesied joy, not only for humanity, but all of creation in a very dark time. The biblical scholars disagree exactly when this text was written, whether it was 2nd or 1st, or 2nd or 3rd Isaiah. 2nd Isaiah was written while the people were still in captivity, and he was talking to the people, telling them, yes, things are bad right now, but they're going to get better. Well, that's a good message for all of us. But perhaps, if indeed it was 3rd Isaiah, which was written after they came back from captivity and returned to Jerusalem, and it wasn't what they expected. It was far less than they expected. And Isaiah encourages those to assure the people the day is coming when all will be made right. As a matter of fact, There will be a highway there on which the redeemed will return to Jerusalem. The deserts will spring forth. Everything will be wonderful the way we always hoped it would be, but it won't be in what went before. It will be in what is to come. And that joy, joy will once again return to God's people. Joy. It's kind of hard to find that nowadays, isn't it? Even when we're seeing joy to the world, our heart longs for a time when joy will be possible again. Because you see, we live under the mistaken assumption that joy has to do with Santa Claus hats and wild suspenders and Grinch socks. It has to do with us putting a smile on our face. It has to do with happiness. But the problem is happiness is dependent on the circumstances we're going through. And sometimes it's just really hard to be happy. And we people of faith seem to think sometimes we just have to fake it for the good of everybody else. But Isaiah knew something through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that we people of God need always to remember is that joy is God's gift to us. You can't find joy. You can't look for joy. You can't put it on your head or on your feet. You can't even wrap yourself in it. Joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And joy is made possible because of a little baby born 2,000 years ago in a manger in Bethlehem. This baby was the incarnation of the creator of all of the universe who willed humanity to be God's representative in the world today and their life would be characterized by joy. Jesus said it best, didn't he? He said, I come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. He wasn't talking about a bass boat. He he wasn't talking about a vacation cottage. That's not the abundance he was talking about. He's talking about a feeling of security, uh, uh, a sense of longing, of being loved, that overcomes the circumstances with which we go through life. So, So whether we have the gifts under our tree that average in price $10,000 or 10 cents, 
Joy is not only possible, it illumines our life through these 40 days of Advent and right on into the new year, regardless of the challenges we all face. How does God do that? Through Jesus Christ, you see. Jesus said, I am the way, the highway. Isaiah says that the evil people won't walk on it. And you read that and you think, well, God's going to keep the evil people off of it. No, friend. Evil people that don't have Christ in their heart are not on the highway. They can't get on the highway because they have no joy. Right? Evildoers won't be there. Well, no, because there's no joy in their heart. Because they haven't opened their heart and God hasn't poured that joy into them. And, and I think one of the big things we misunderstand is why this child came. Oh, we get part of it. See, we understand that Christ came to die. We see it all the time, but he did more than that. <laughs> he came to live. He came to teach. And most importantly, he came to send his spirit. And it is through the working of the Holy Spirit that we encounter joy. Kevin will tell you, it's funny sometimes how a sermon shows up. Well, maybe his was all normal, but mine were always weird. I, I was down in the basement the other day at the parsonage. There's a room in the back there that I never go into because there's evil things live in there, I'm sure. It's got a lock on the door like you see in the horror movies, you know, don't go in this. And as soon as you walk towards the door, the music starts. You ever seen the horror movie? Don't ever go in when the music starts, right? But I had to go in there to get the Christmas tree out, and I looked over in the corner, and I found this chair. It's now my Advent chair. Uh, this chair, uh, obviously... Uh, is in need of a little upkeep, isn't it? Uh, you can't see them right now, but there's spider webs on it, and it's dirty. But you know, if, if you think back, someone came up with the design of this chair. They, they had a picture in their mind of what this chair could be, and that person had the skill to bring this chair, this idea, this will, to fruition. And knew that this chair would meet the needs that it was designed for. And I'm sure when this chair was new, it was something to behold. I bet it was the cat's meow. But you know, uh, life happens, doesn't it? There's a couple of places that are missing here, and it's a little wobbly, beat up. And finally, I guess some preacher decided it wasn't good enough for him, so he stuck it down in the basement. And you folks got him new furniture. Chair is just like me, designed by my Creator with purpose, with function. But lots happened over the years. I don't look as good on the outside as I once did, and there's a few nicks and bruises. And Lord knows, <laughs> a lot more wobblier than I used to be. But you know, the, I wonder if this chair could be restored. That's what Isaiah was talking about, wasn't it? Restoring what Israel had lost. Is, is there a way that I can be restored to what God really intended me to be? Not, not just forgive my sin. You see, that's like knocking the cobwebs off. You can knock all the cobwebs you want, 
off this chair, and guess what? It's still an old chair. Nothing's changed at all. Oh, and I could, I could get Kevin to glue it, maybe take a little of the wobble out of it. But I need to be more than just repaired. And I, you know, he's got some of that magic juice out there in his garage that you can paint on stuff and it makes it look brand new. But see, I need to be more than refinished. We got the church too full of people who've just been refinished. They look good on the outside. They're still dead in a doornail on the inside. But I bet Kevin could take this chair into his shop and given enough time, he could restore this chair. Some of it would have to be removed. Some of it would have to be scraped down. Some of it would have to be totally redone. He might even have to form a few new parts to it. Because you see, restoration has more to do than just coming back. It has to do with refulfilling the purpose and the design and the will of the person who created this chair. My friends, Jesus came back not so we could change just where we're going to spend eternity. He came back to restore in us the glory of creation that we might once again be God's representatives in the world. And you see, that's what brings joy into life, knowing that no matter how old and decrepit or decrepit and young you may find yourself, the one who designed you and created you longs to restore you. Now, it's probably not going to be comfortable for the chair. Kevin can be a mean son of a gun when he gets them vices and them sand and wheels going down. And, and, it, and restoration takes pain sometimes. But the finished product is worth the grinding. Some of you are feeling the grinding right now. This year has been hard. You've lost people you love. We worry about our world. We're fighting cancer. We don't know what's going to happen with the economy. Lord, we don't even know what's going to happen with our church. And God asks us to live in joy. Well, if our joy is based on the circumstances, guess what? Slim pickings. But if it indeed is a gift of God and we're on the road, can we not be joyful? Joyful that God hasn't given up on us. Joyful that God thinks we're worth so much that he's not only willing to invest his only son in us, but he's willing to give us his spirit that we don't have to wait for that road to be formed to glory. It's already there. And because Christ is in our heart, we're bound. Now I have to tell you, there might be obstacles on that road, things we have to overcome. Every once in a while, I have to go to Roanoke. The only thing I hate worse than Walmart is I-81. When I first got up here, I went on I-81 the first time, and I thought, you know, this is, this is crazy. These people in Virginia don't know how to drive at all like we people in Tennessee do. But it's flat dangerous going to Roanoke. Have you noticed? So being the smart preacher that I was, I figured, well, I'm going to figure out a better way to go than going on 81. I'm going to take the back roads. Now, I know some of you wives are smiling right now because you know the way we are, we men. We love to do the back roads. And I did find a pretty back road to Roanoke. I got there three and a half hours later than I should have if I'd have taken I-81. We always think there's an easier way, don't we? Huh. 
No, I-81 I may not be perfect. And we may decide to take a side road now and again. But you see, no matter how hard it is to become what God wants us to be, it's worth it. Because you see, He knows <laughs> the final destination. Oh, left to my own devices, I'd given up a thousand times. I'd turn from the path. But you see, I put my trust in the one who not only designed the road, but paved it, constructed it. And all the things that are happening in my life, even today, are part of this restoration. This sanding down, this re-enabling the potential that lives in all of us. And because God has not given up on me, I can live in joy. Not because I'm always happy, but because God's got my back. My friends, uh, joy is wonderful. But there's a reason that that candle's different than any of the others. Joy is a gift that only comes to those who are willing to go through what God's putting you through. And when joy finally comes into your life, you realize you never found joy. Joy found you. In fact, joy was looking for you before you were even born. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's all stand and share the joy in our hearts with each other as we sing and praise God together. You know, as we think about joy, Lon's message this morning, one of my family's favorite movies is Elf. And one of the rules from Elf is the best way to spread Christmas cheer is to sing loud for all to hear. So let's uh, sing joyously this morning. One. Whoa.
Joy is a gift of God that he gives you to share with other people. Friends, we may be in dark times and you may be struggling. Maybe joy isn't something you've achieved and like the people in Isaiah's time, this is not what you expected when you came to Jesus. Can I tell you, God hasn't lost control. You're right where God needs you to be right now. And if you're willing to go through the process, he'll not only dust you off and clean you up, he'll not only repair you, he'll not only refinish you, he'll restore you. Give him the time, give him the chance, and joy will be yours. Go forth and serve the living Lord. Amen.